um, welcome to a little bit where we talk about a few things, a small selection of the things that go on behind the scenes, some of which may not be noticed, but the effects of you will have that are quite dramatic. So you'll have noticed during the first lockdown, we cobbled together our own system for remote entries, remote payments, that kind of thing. Now, we did that because at the time, the offerings available really didn't do what we wanted or didn't do it at a price that was at all reasonable, often charging more than we were actually charging us more than we were charging participants for events, just completely wasn't possible. So we know what we cobbled together wasn't perfect, there were many issues with it. Come this term and we're starting to look to start events, we're thinking, well, let's see what else is on there. And one that Devon had been using and quite a few had had to come across was race sign up. Now, it's actually written by an orienteer themselves from Southampton and it does pretty much everything that we want it to do and at a really sensible price. So we've started now and we've had a couple of events run using race sign up. It integrates quite well with our website. You do have to go away to actually use it, but it has a few really neat features that I particularly want to point out. And one of those is the ability to bulk buy credits. It's nothing to do for site or us. Every time someone pays using a credit or debit card, there is a fee. Obviously that gets passed on to the club and it is 30 pence per transaction. Now, if you think of a job, we're only charging a pound. That's a quite a significant chunk of the income. But it's just going to credit card fees. With race sign up, we've been able to set it up so you can bulk buy credits. You could buy even up to 70 pounds if you want, but even if it was just 10 pounds and then use those credits at our events. Now, because buying those 10 pounds credits with one transaction, that's 30 pence credit for card fees. If you then use that at 10 jogs as one pound each, we have saved a couple of pounds. It's not cost you any extra, but the club has actually managed to save a couple of pounds for processing fees. So that's something I really want to point out. It's a really helpful thing. It also means when you come to then sign up for clubs, for events through the club, you can just say, I want to pay using the credits. You don't have to keep putting your credit card details in. So it helps you there as well. So race sign up, something to be aware of. Another thing which we'd actually quietly launched last year, so over a year ago, um, and it was just quietly just building up a little thing, seeing them, but we've now really properly launched in the year we've just had, is the QO chat site. It came out originally from the idea that often after events in the olden days, people would hang around chatting, comparing routes, all this kind of thing, which got pushed out of the way with social distancing. So the idea initially was, okay, well, let's have something where people get home, uh, they've maybe even thought about what they did on the drive home and they start going post on and discuss routes that way. Particularly if you can see route gadget, but just all sorts of different ways. And that's where it sort of came from. And it's also been quite a good way of communicating other things. So it's well worth after an event going down. There should be a thread on the chat site about that event. If, there, if you can't find one, start one um, and see how things are going. And there's other things. There's one, there's one thread about discussing best type of running shoes for orienteering, different types. There's, there's all sorts of things. So that's well worth checking out if you haven't already. And another area I just want to highlight, it's always been there and it's always been quite a tricky part of organising event. But in the last year or so, it has been incredibly difficult. Various different large landowners have put in extra constrictions, um, only certain times of year. Some of them for really good reasons. Some of them are to make sure that we aren't running through undergrowth when there's ground nesting birds. That's a really important thing. and It's well worth us knowing and working around that. Others have come in because they've got different management structures now. Others have come in because perhaps they want to prioritise events that get them more revenue. Sometimes there have been genuine staff shortages due to COVID and so on. So lots of different reasons has made it more and more difficult for us to get permissions for events. So you just to be aware that's a big area that particularly our permission secretary is working on, but everyone else around. And yes, I'm afraid we will be getting no definite answers to events closer and closer to the deadline. Hopefully things will start getting better, but at the moment, that's a big background thing to be aware of. 